How do you defend a service? Say, we've got a new service that we're going to stand up. Great, let's put a WAF in front of it. Now it's safe. And, oh, maybe we'll put a firewall appliance in front of it as well. Now it's really safe. Also, well, it has to run on a VM. We can't use a container because we need our endpoint tooling to run on, the, on where that, that code is running. So, so now we've got endpoint tooling. We've got a firewall appliance. We've got a WAF. That means the service is safe. Um, or, you know, you have a human test it, you have some robots test it, you instrument it to see what it does so you can tell if it's acting weird, if it's making calls to places that it sh shouldn't be, if it's, you know, running syscalls that it's not intended to. It goes without saying that you're running in a container here, so you've got one process that you can instrument, that you can meaningfully manage. You make it immutable so it doesn't have any writable disk on the host that it's running on. You make it ephemeral so if it does get compromised, that container only lasts for, I don't know, let's say it's, uh, if you've got good fast container roll, maybe it lasts for 15 minutes, and then you just roll, and you're just constantly doing a roll. So great, pop a container, you know, good luck, uh, good luck persisting. You're going to have to use that exploit again and again and again and generate a ton of log noise that we're then going to notice. Eliminate egress, right? There's no reason. If it doesn't need to talk to hosts on the internet that aren't talking to it, it shouldn't be able to talk to the internet, including DNS. Add rate limiting, right? That's what actually defending a service looks like. And yet, I also see type one probably equally often.